How did your writing career start? Did you always want to be a writer? I've always been fascinated by writing. When I was a small kid, I always had books around my house. My parents always liked to read. And so from a very young age, I liked to tell stories. Um, starting back when I was in the fifth grade, I actually wrote a book uh, called The Monster's Cookbook. And it was uh, so impressive to my teacher, she actually had it bound and put in my school's library. So starting as early as the fifth grade, I was like, wow, this is really cool. I'd like to do this for a living. Um, unfortunately, then I went into a severe slump and didn't write another book for about 20 years. So, uh, uh, but I've always wanted to, to be a writer and to have a chance to do it now for a living is, is just a dream come true. I think uh, deep down inside, I always wanted to be a writer. And uh, I went through three other careers before I finally got down to business and, and started writing. So uh, I wrote a lot while I was in school as a younger guy and uh, at the same time I pursued like regular careers, sort of regular careers. I started off as a pilot, learned to fly, spent four years learning to fly and then I couldn't get a job. So that was when I decided I'd sit down and write a book. And uh, when I initially decided to sit down and write a book, I thought it'd take about a year and then I'd be rich. I'd be driving around on one of those yachts out there. and. Uh, Fifteen years later, I finally got a publishing contract. <laughs> so it was a long road, but it was great. I never really thought about being that I could be a writer. I've always loved thrillers, but uh, it, it took me a while before I realized that maybe I could create my own stories. And so when I got the idea to write, um, I made a deal with my wife that uh, I wanted to write full time so and she wanted to go to medical school so I put her through nine years of pre-med med school and residency with the agreement that once she was done I would get to quit my job and get nine years to become a published author and I did it in five years. How difficult is it to achieve success and when you're there is it difficult to stay on top? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a different sort of pressure. Um, very early on in my career, it was, you know, trying to achieve a dream and thinking it would never happen. Uh, once it did happen, then it was like uh, uh, I all of a sudden have a bunch of other responsibilities to go along with the writing. Um, you have the promotions that you have to do, you have the, the uh, multiple publishers around the world, so you're always constantly doing PR for different countries or, or uh, different organizations. And so all of that kind of cuts into your time. And uh, so early in my career, I could just focus on the writing. Nowadays, it seems I spend more time doing social media and other things than I do actually sitting there creating stories. Uh, you know, it seems like everything's difficult, uh, whatever you do in life. Uh, and both of those things are equally as hard. I think it's easier to be motivated to achieve in the first place because you're so excited to do it. I think a lot of times if you've achieved success, the biggest danger is becoming complacent. If you become complacent, you basically put yourself in a situation where you're not doing your best work. And if you're not doing your best work, sooner or later, everyone else will notice. So it's, it's, I, I think it's the difference between uh, climbing up a mountain and, and, and then walking along the top, you know, if, if, if you slip, you're going to fall just as bad either way. It is very hard to break into the writing business, I will say that. I mean, it took me th three books. I didn't get published till my third book, but I eventually went back and got the first two books that I wrote published. Um, but staying published is not a guarantee. I mean, you have to keep delivering with every single book. Uh, otherwise, you, you won't continue to publish. Your book, The Hunters, will be made into a film. Filming will start in the near future. Will it be the first of many? I certainly hope it is. Uh, the, the first book has been optioned, and uh, the producers that optioned the book, they actually like the second book in the series even better than the first. So the goal was definitely to film a sequel. Um, the producers recently read the first draft of the third book, and they're thrilled with it as well. So I'm hoping that this is the first of many movies to come. You have worked with Clive Kustler. How is it working with a giant of the book industry? Oh, wow. Uh, Clive is a, a great guy. I mean, first of all, the first time I went to meet him, I was incredibly nervous, incredibly nervous. And uh, he cracked a few jokes, made me feel at home, and we just sat down and started, started working on stuff. Um, 
I don't know how it is. Everybody's different. I don't know how it is to work with anyone else, but he, he's, he makes it fun. He makes it interesting. Uh, he has a way of kind of imparting knowledge to you without you even realizing that's what he's doing. For instance, we'll have these brainstorming sessions in his office and, and we'll sit around and talk about ideas. And, you know, I, I'm trying to impress him because basically he's the boss. And what will happen is I'll throw out an idea, he'll throw out an idea, I'll throw out another idea. And we're each trying to top each other usually. And it, it, it's great. It's a lot of fun. And, and it's also frustrating because no matter how good my idea is, he always has a better one. <laughs> He's a great guy. I, I've been reading his books for 35 years, and he's the one who got me interested in reading and writing thrillers in the first place. So it's a real honor and a privilege to actually be working with him now. It's, it's kind of like I'm working with my hero. Um, and he's a great guy. He's very easygoing, and of course, he's a legend in the, in the business and, and the master of thrillers. So uh, I love working with him. You have been in Malta for a few days. What are your general impressions of the country? Oh, I've been blown away by it. It's it's really, really beautiful. Everyone that I've met has been extremely nice. The food is making me fat. I mean, it, it has just been, been wonderful. It really has been. Wow, it's an incredibly energetic country. Uh, coming from the United States, a lot of times you travel to places where people have a very, very laid back lifestyle and it's it's easy going and 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 relaxing in a way that that almost feels slower to Americans but Malta everybody seems to have energy uh, people are excited to do stuff people are building things everywhere um, the history I think lends itself to that because so many centuries and thousand years of even you know 10,000 years of people building here and it hasn't stopped and I think for the Maltese people you have your own language that you've held on to you know Maltese people seem to be very proud of everything that has happened here whether it's the, the, the temples the history uh, the, the, the the fence during the various wars over the thousand years, holding on to their own language, doing their own thing. In a, in a real, very real way, what I can see is Malta and the Maltese people carving out their own identity in a world where a lot of places are becoming the same. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, it's the, the amount of history and, and scenery here is, is astounding and everywhere we go, um, is, is another picture-perfect sight to see. Is it a probability that Malta will feature in your next book? There, there is definitely a chance. Um, I've been thinking about, uh, over the years, every time I put Malta in, in, in a story, I've always been thinking, okay, what, what can I do to feature Malta in a story? And whether that be uh, an archaeological mystery that has something to do with Malta, um, or having uh, perhaps the villain of a story living in Malta and then having the, the team come here to get them and there'd be chase scenes through the streets of Malta or something. But I've definitely got a couple ideas cooking in my brain. The more that I'm here, I think the more ideas I'm going to get. And uh, uh, Malta will definitely be appearing in the pages in the future. Oh, I would say it's a high probability. There are so many incredible places here. Uh, it would be crazy not to. Um, whether it's a historical book that takes place in one of your eras in the past, or a modern book where the characters are living today. We, we were out in Valletta Harbor today and just examining the, the forts that defend the harbor, I, I could see several fantastic ideas of ways to use that history and use those scenes uh, that would come alive for readers. And really for writers, that's, that's what we're trying to do is project a movie and an image and a feeling into the reader's mind. And to have places like the forts in Valletta, perfect, perfect scenes for it. Oh yeah, yeah, I have, I've already had a lot of ideas about how to feature it. I mean, again, because there's so much history from the you know, the, the Knights Templar era, the Greeks and the Romans, up to Napoleon and World War II. I can see a lot of ways, because I feature a lot of history in, in my books, 
um, I, I can already see how I do that. And then as far as I also write action thrillers, so there's lots of great locations that we've seen from the narrow alleys of Endina to, to the Freeport where the, the big crew, uh, big uh, cargo ships and container port. Um, I can already see a lot of action scenes that I could put together.